Good evening, all. I wrapped in with your spider ETF wrap up for a pretty crazy trading day. And they're all nuts right now. And this is Wednesday and we're at the 16th of February, 2022. And I did go to the store tonight and I did get my wife her discounted flowers and she absolutely loved them. So ha, to those of you that thought I'd be in trouble doing that and I got the bargain. And speaking of that, oil price is down about two and a half, three dollars tonight. There's a word that the US and Iran are this close to a deal. So I guess the nuclear treaty is going to be back on and the Biden administration will come out and say that they have solved American inflation problems in energy. Of course, we're climbing in the bed with a bunch of rascals, right? And uh, that government, very difficult to trust. And uh, what are they going to do with that money? Support the Houthi again and others. I think that's going to be the game unless I can see something in the treaty that stops that. We'll see. You know, eventually, as much as I don't like the Iranian government, I do realize the world needs to get along. So I am not a warmonger. It's the opposite. I'm a pacifist, if anything, actually. Okay. So we also get to the Fed minutes came out today. Certainly, you, you see everybody's looking at raising interest rates and uh, getting down that balance sheet. You see that very clearly. You saw retail sales jump through the roof this morning, very powerful set of retail numbers, uh, one of the biggest gains we've recently seen. Uh, a lot of it was in automobiles and furniture, things you couldn't get before. So the supply chains coming through. What about all those cards that people gave? And if I'm talking the gift cards instead of getting the merchandise, maybe that's being spent. And of course, inflation. Inflation staring you in the face on everything you buy. Everything I look at is going up in price, and that becomes the bigger problem for everything. Okay. So when we look at uh, Invesco, the dollar, the market's at a key number. It's got divergence. You have momentum pointing down. You have the trend up. You have higher lows, higher highs, and unless and until 2548 is taken out. So right through here, I think the bulls are buying right at this 18-day average. They're risking not very much, 14 cents. That's not much of a risk. They're trying to get up to 2607. Admittedly, this is not a high risk market. You're just trading in narrow ranges, but it's worth looking at. When we come to the daily bar chart, and by the way, that's the weekly. On the daily, you can see the action through here, and you don't have that trend at work. You have a lower low, higher high. There's more divergence in this. Where's the key moving averages? Well, you keep running into a brick wall for all purposes at the 18-day average. You stick your head up, you try to get oxygen, it's gonna go, and it pulls right back. The bigger support's at 25.56, which is the 200-day average, I'm sorry, the 100-day in green, and the 18 is the resistance at this point. When we take a look at Bollinger Bands, you had them here and here, and since January, you haven't been able to do anything. You're really caught between the 100-day average and the 18-day, and in terms of momentum, you're trying to turn up, and you're sort of just drifting in that at this point. Not an awful lot one way or the other. Apple has now got a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. You had an outside day down today. An outside day means you took out the previous day's high, low, close, and settled lower on the day. Now, you can spring what's called a bull trap by taking out today's high. And if you did that, one of the targets becomes the upper Bollinger Band. If you get over that, the one thing you don't want to do is then reverse back down through today's low. That would be a double reversal, not a pretty picture, but I'm just pointing out what's there. In XLF, the financial sector, you're in an uptrend in terms of price. You're over what? Are you overbought in the market? Yeah. Any reading in the slow stochastic that is over 70 without both of the numbers going sideways over 80 for several days or more is overbought. Overbought typically doesn't attract new buying. 
what would be the catalyst to prove, hey, I don't care if it's overbought, I'm going to keep going up. Probably taking out 4041, it opens the door again for the upper Bollinger Band. And if it drifts here, bigger support weights the market at 3963 to 46, the 100 day average, the 18, and you don't want to get under 3933. That wouldn't surprise me if uh, that's where the pros are going to try to support the market. Disney keeps climbing as we're staring. All the masks are coming off around the country. It's, it's just place after place after place. I pray that we're okay on it. I'm for it, obviously. You know, I want to get life back to normal as fast as we all can. I'm seeing all the concerts that are being planned already uh, around the country, and they'll be maskless at this point. And I know in my own state, February 28th, uh, the, for many places, the mask no longer has to be worn, and that's happening on other other states. But in Disney, my point of you got a lot of resistance coming right at you in terms of the 100 day average and that Bollinger Band in an overbought market. In XLI, which is the industrial sector, sort of stuck here. The market tried to push itself lower, and that was off fears that interest rates obviously are going to go up right away and so on. You saw today's retail sales. Retail sales in the U.S. exploded. There's no other word for it. They exploded. Cars and furniture were the monster items. Now, we know that we're also going to see that that's going to impact other things because those items are going at big prices. It's going to be inflationary. Inflation made the retail sales larger, and probably those cards that you gave out, a lot of people did at Christmas, and those cards are now getting spent because there's merchandise showing up on the shelves of many of the retailers. That's important. In the semiconductor area, it's bullish. It's overbought, unfortunately, but bullish. I like the sideways action. I want to go on record. This looks like it's forming a bottom, a big bottom and the market might be ready to move again. So that's gonna be good news. There's also talk, and I mentioned this yesterday, that many of the major, major semiconductor manufacturers are trying to figure out how to avoid making a semiconductor a commodity. Remember how TVs come out? They start off at six, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for this newest revolution and something you really don't need. And then the price quickly falls and all of a sudden we all need, gee, I need that 4K, I need all that. Can I ask you how many programs are broadcast in that that you watch? But it drives the price of everything down. And you keep, most people keep their TV now until they don't, until it stops working. The beauty of it is they're made so well they last. Uh, and when you go to replace them, they're no longer the hit because it's become a commodity. Well, that becomes in some of these semiconductors the story there. Some of them are everyday type of semiconductors. They're easy to make. They're easy to put the special programs in to operate that little gadget in your house. Others are very complicated. They're trying to figure out how to stabilize the price so they don't make it a, a low price commodity. Home builders trying to get a leg up here. Now, everywhere that I'm reading, if you were watching today and you read Financial News, it's how many million dollar plus homes there are throughout the big cities throughout America. It, it's like a disease. They're everywhere you look. Simply put, it's, it's so sad to say, uh, a million dollar home is no longer like you're that rich. It's a million dollar home. You know, now it's five million, 10 million that is the sign that you're, you're richer. That's, if you're living in the country and you're hearing me say this, you think I'm out of my mind, and I know you do. I would, but that's just what it is. Resistance, right through the 18-day average, close over that, and I, I like the long side then. So when he close over 72, 72, I think opens the door to come back up there. In the energy sector, as I said, we're gonna see in the morning that energy prices fell. Now, I'm assuming they'll stay down unless we see an invasion of the Ukraine in some manner, then they'll jack right back up. But that's the word that the, the US and Iran are really close together. Gold markets liking everything and it's still thinking war, what's it good for? Remember that song? I love that song. Um, coming up to 175.36, okay? You're at resistance in GDX, the gold miners. All of them look good. The metals look hot. 
What's my favorite trades for this year? What did I say? Metals, energies. Those are my favorite trades. I, I don't see how we get away from higher prices. Copper, does that look bad to you? I don't think so. I still think it looks good. And here you are with the bearishness in TLT. Okay, got a bounce today, but are we embedded? So embedded means that the numbers are staying for several days or more under 20. Now, if I can get this to turn. Was it there under 20? No, but it didn't close over 21, and the number came right back down. It stayed embedded, and as long as it's embedded, I think these rallies, these short rallies, keep getting sold by the pros. That's what I'm looking for on that market right now. Last, the euro currency, it seems to be saying it really doesn't want to go under and stay under 105.24, but it has no reason to be bought and go up, and that's the problem. One of the things I'm telling you, you've got to learn to work with and you've got to hone yourself right now in it, is how to recognize coming out up there and how to lift out of shorts at these numbers here. Take a look at this. It'll show you a lot about that.